thing, everybody's hands go up and they stay there and they stay there, right? Because all we do is win. But no, we don't. We don't always win. But we don't always fail and we don't always lose. And today, I'm going to talk about the connection between fail and success. And so first, let's just start with the definition. If you look up fail in the dictionary, the definition is either lack of, a miss, a mistake, or the opposite of success. But how have we thought about failing differently? How? if we thought about it as an acronym. F, fast or first. A, attempt. I, in, and L, learning. How if we thought about failure as an acronym and a tool for success? So, the first time you make a mistake, it feels awful. The first time you fail a test, the first time you don't get a job, the first time, the first time, and it feels like this boulder that you just can't get around or push up or get out of your way. But if you thought about that failure differently, then you could learn from it. And those lessons would give you resiliency. They would give you calluses so that the next time you take those lessons, it doesn't hurt as much. They would also give you humility. And humility leads to empathy and leads to connection. And then you can be a catalyst for that learning for other people. And so as I'm standing here, I'm looking at all your beautiful faces and people are saying, who is she to tell me about my life? You don't know anything about me. You don't know the, my failures. You don't know how hard it is. And you're right, I don't. But I know mine. I know my stories. And I know that without my failures, I wouldn't be here today. And so I, I, I'm gonna take you on that journey. And I'm gonna start, you know, first time you fall, the first time you get a D, the first time, you know, it's parents weekend, freshman year, and you've done something silly. And I go back to my mom's face and her voice. And she's no longer with me, but as a result of these lessons, I have moved through life pretty well. I'm blessed. And I remember my mom saying to me so many times, Kimberly, you paid for that? Did you want that to happen? Was that the decision you made? What were you thinking? And I'm a person who always has to do it myself. Like, I need to learn my own lessons. I need to try it out. You could tell me a thousand times, and I still have to figure it out. And so she would say, most people, my dear, have learning trees. You have a whole damn orchard. But I'll tell you something, I'm really happy that I have that orchard because that orchard has bore fruit and lessons to sustain a very long and fulfilling life. And it's not, I mean, look, if I showed you the scars, you'd understand. But I'm gonna take you on a few stories to just give you a little more context and I hope that they're entertaining. But even more importantly, I hope that you can see nuggets of how you can flip fail into success. So we're going to start with teenage Kimberly. Now I know at this time of the year, I have a teenager, it's my second child. Everyone's asking, what do you want to be? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Well, we don't know but we think we know, right? And so my journey was that I was going to be a dancer. I studied dance from three. I became a professional at 13, and I was going to study dance at that school. 
And it was the Thursday before auditions. It was a rainy Thursday afternoon, and I had my umbrella, you know, the bubble umbrellas. I had it pulled down, and I was walking through the parking lot very briskly, and something hit me, and it knocked me down. And before I could get my wits about me, it went over me. And then it went over me again, and I heard screaming, and I woke up in a room with people I didn't know looking at me with bright lights. Well, that was my first real experience with failure, something that was going to change my life, because I couldn't dance after that. I had been run over twice by a car. And so after I got past the depression and confusion of what am I going to do? Who am I going to be? I was going to be Debbie Allen. Do you know? Like I was gonna have that stick and I was gonna be famous. Well, what? Can't do that. And so while I was healing and trying to figure out what's next, I was watching TV, Oprah. Oprah. Well, she's another amazing black woman. I'm going to be Oprah. I love to talk. I like to interview people. I like stories. So I decided, OK, I'm going to get my degree in communications, I'm going to school for that. I did. And while I was in school, I interned at the top stations in Philadelphia. I had my own show. And then it was time to send out audition tapes. I sent out a 1,000 tapes. I got four callbacks, four. And I didn't even know where they were. Like, I couldn't find the cities on the map. I was like, ooh, <laughs> yikes. Fail number two. I need to pivot. And at the time, it wasn't a buzzword, but it was a conversation I had with my mom and dad, because they were like, well, you can't be a starving artist, and you got to figure it out. And I was lucky enough, because at that point, I was really lost. So I was like, well, if I don't know, what's it going to look like? But there was a recruiter on campus from Macy's Executive Training Program. And let me tell you, retail was the farthest thing from my mind. Because all I knew about retail was my part-time job in the mall. I was like, I, you're kidding. I'm going to grad school. I can't be in retail. Why would you even talk to me about that? But I opened my mind because I started looking back on my orchard and some of the mistakes I had made and how I hadn't had an open mind. And that had prevented me from being able to achieve something else. And I really didn't understand what fail could be. And so I, I listened and it started me on this incredible journey and an incredible career that has taken me to as I'm standing here in front of you right now. And so as life went on, and I had, I traveled the world, great promotions, I was moving quickly. And then I met this gentleman, and we got married. Very happy, and life changed a little bit. And then we had two children. But my desire to still be Kimberly and to have that amazing career that I didn't even know was out there for me was still my driver. I loved being a mother. It took a lot to get there. And I wanted to give the same energy to, my, to being a mom, to being a career, to being a wife. And so I, I was doing my thing. I was running around, making sure everybody had what they needed. And I felt like I was failing at it all. I couldn't always be at school. I, I was, you know, had to leave for my son's second birthday. I was the mom running in with my suitcase for the choir concert, just as I was told my son had just finished his solo. Well, it was, I'm failing. I'm failing. So my friends decided we need to have a little intervention. They pulled me aside, took me to lunch, and they said, you got to chill out. What are you doing? And I said, no, I'm failing, right? Like, I'm a mess. And they were like, no, <laughs> no, 
need to chill out because we can't keep up and stop, right? And I was like, what are you talking about? What? They were like, you, you make it really difficult for other people. So my, my relationship with failure at that point was perception. I perceived myself as a failure because I had this big picture of who I should be based on other people's ideas. And so I had to take that time to go back to the orchard and evaluate why I felt that way and then create my own goals, my own definition of good, great, and excellent. And as I did that, and I really got comfortable in that space, I continued on my career, I continued being a mom, and I was feeling like I was doing, I was doing pretty good. And then I got the call for the job of my dreams. I was gonna be the senior vice president of a multi-billion dollar business. Me. And so I took it. it. Didn't come without some challenges. Challenges that we might have to move. Well, we did have to move, but that's another part of the story. We have to move. Now I have kids who are in high school and middle school. I'm the devil. I'm moving my kids. Then I get to the job and I am on fire. I'm like, I'm ready to do it. I add a half a billion dollars to the business in six months, I get more responsibility. Now I'm running three organizations, one person, one admin, and I'm doing it. And I'm really proud. I'm on that wheel and I get to the airport on one of my trips to come back, and I'm on my way back. I'm sitting waiting for them to call my section and they do, and I go to stand up, but my body doesn't move. I can't move. I can't move. All I can do is cry into the phone to my girlfriend that I can't move. And so we, we finally, I got it together, got on the plane, called the doctor, and I discovered that I was very ill. I was very, short, very close to a stroke and probably a nervous breakdown because I was keeping all those balls in the air. And so at work, when I went back, I had hit what they call now the glass cliff. Now I had heard about the glass ceiling, but the glass cliff is what women run into when they feel like they can take it on, or those are the opportunities that you're given, fix it. Fix it, you're a superwoman, fix it. I couldn't fix me, and while I had fixed work, there just were some fractures there that we couldn't overcome. And so we separated, call it a separation. I had some challenges with, with, with what was going on. They had some challenges with me having challenges. And so we separated. That's fine. I landed very nicely. But in my head, I had failed again. What do you do with that? And this is where it all came together for me because I actually was able to go to that orchard and understand what support looks like because it gave me the strength to have a very honest conversation with my husband. It gave me the strength to wake up the next day, even after I felt like I had failed, cry a little bit, and then apply to school. And went back, after going to grad school, I went back to Wharton and Stanford and then I opened my business. And I started to really feel like it's all coming together. And so as I stand here, it wasn't, I mean, I'm making it because I have 15 minutes, but there were people who said, what are you doing? Why wouldn't you want to work there? Why, it doesn't matter how the situation was. It doesn't matter how you felt. You had this big job. Who are you without it? There were people who told me I couldn't go to school. There were people, there will be people all around you who will be those naysayers. But if you build your orchard and you have the resiliency and the grit, and that's what all 
It all adds up to that grit to stand and know what's right for you and to be comfortable in making those mistakes because you're building an orchard. And so I'm not celebrating failure. I don't want anyone to walk away from here thinking that I'm saying, woo, 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 fail. What I'm offering is another perspective on fail. Flip it, flip it, make it an acronym and make it a tool for your success. So let me share some numbers with you. 9,000, 9,000 shots missed. 300 games lost. Now you all know who I'm talking about, right? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, those are his stats. And we consider him the best basketball player in history. But the only reason he can say that is because he kept trying. He kept trying. He figured it out that without failure, there couldn't be success. And so I'm just going to leave you with a few takeaways. I hope they're helpful. If you want to jot them down, that's great. But the first is as you're on this journey and you're making mistakes, take notes. Because when you're in it, the emotion is there. But once you walk away from it, go back to it and look at your notes. There will be lessons every time. Pivot, 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 and keep pivoting until it works. Remind yourself, what's for you is for you. And sometimes it takes a few times to get there, but it's okay. Also, stay, he stay healthy. I don't want anybody else getting stuck in an airport. It's not fun. Fail fast. Now, I know we hear that a lot, but here's what it means. You're in, it's inevitable that we're gonna have failures. Flip it so that it's a learning, and if you can, fail fast. Do not sit in it, do not wallow in what that feeling is. Feel it, but move on and cry. You can cry, crying is okay, crying is actually good. So cry as long as you need to, but make sure you move on. Thank you.